This is the Free Hill Life Podcast, episode number 146. I'm your host, Josh Madsen, coming at you from the Free Hill Life Shop in Salt Lake City, Utah. And welcome back for another fine episode of your Telemark Underground Radio this week. So, super excited to be back and got a couple newsroom and notes basically coming from old Telly Tay at our brand retail shop. And he just wanted to let everybody know that We've still got 184 centimeter protectors that are available. And again, if you haven't been listening in the last few weeks, this is our second batch and we've sort of closed it off after that while we kind of figure stuff out and what we're going to be producing for the upcoming winter. So get on it now if you're in that size range, 184 centimeter protector 105, protector 95, this is your chance to be part even more part of our Free Hill Life family because you're already a part of it if you're listening to the podcast. So we appreciate that. Also, uh, Tay wanted me to let you guys know uh, if you're looking for something in terms of equipment or a part, uh, bindings, boots, that sort of thing, reach out to the team at customer service at freehilllife.com. And as inventory is coming in, because we're starting to already see a couple delays on things uh, from different manufacturers, we want to make sure to kind of get it on our radar with the sales team so that we can make sure to get it to you and let you know about it first, whatever it may be. Uh, Any of those telemark questions that you may have, this is a great time to sort of get on it now, get it on our radar and uh, let us help you. Because, of course, we want to be your preferred telemark spot to pick things up. So thank you very much for that. And you can always go check out freehealthlife.com to see what else we're up to. So with that, uh, my guest today, he grew up moving around and skied a little bit before taking a job in the Carabasset Valley, where he worked at Sugarloaf Ski Area in Maine. His brother had moved out to Alta, Utah, and eventually convinced him to head out west, where he scored a job at Alta Ski Area. During his stint there was when he brewed his first batch of beer with some Alta friends. They used to put it in an old mine cart and push it back into the old mine to keep the the temperature correct. After years of working at other breweries in the Salt Lake Valley, he opened Templin Family Brewing in 2018. We talk about being a ski bum, goggle tans, and how cool it is now for him to see people drinking TF beer up on the hill. So please welcome to the podcast, Kevin Templin. All right, Kevin, welcome to the Free Hill Life podcast. How's it going? Appreciate it. Thank you for having me. It's going good. Uh, Yeah, I'm stoked, man. It's uh, kind of a roundabout connection. I, I know your brother. So <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. I know he visits your shop a lot. Yeah, I know for sure. And, and, uh, he, uh, he was always bringing us beer and I was like, where's the beer coming from? And, and I want to get into that. But, uh, <laughs> and then he's like, no, my brother, he's a telemark skier too. So I thought it'd be, a. am always trying to find just cool telemark skiers doing cool stuff. And I thought this would be a, a cool, cool chance to chat with you. Yeah. You know, the mountains and craft beer and, Italian and all that that all kind of goes together we had a t-shirt i i made back honestly i think it was the first year of the shop 2014 it said uh telemark skiing craft turns so there you go <laughs> yeah all right that'll work <laughs> i just because i kept thinking i was like this is i i, I was always drawing that parallel to just like you know uh, sort of the personality, I guess, behind, you know, crafting things. And, um, I always said telemark turns were much more of a craft than a sport, you know, like it's this, uh, endless, you know, sort of focus on trying to perfect the ingredients, you know? So anyways, I don't know. You tell me you're the beer guy. So, (laughs) well, you know, I mean, I guess, I don't know. I guess it's, it's, or just let go, you know what I mean? And yeah. just flow and let the mountain pull you down. See, you yeah, know, let see. the beer, let the kind of like, you know, let the ingredients, let the beer talk to you. It's yeah. kind of the same thing. Yeah, for sure. Well, I want to, um, I, I want to kind of go back like, and, and talk a little bit about, um, did, did you grow up here in Salt Lake? 
No, nah, no. Nah, I grew up in the East Coast. East Coast. I grew up in like like Cleveland and Georgia, Florida. My mom and dad moved down there, and then I migrated up to uh, up to Maine. I lived in Carabasa Valley. Worked at Sugarloaf up there in the early nineties, like ninety ninety one. Gotcha. Eight, yeah, and then my brother moved to Alta, and he kept telling me, "Oh, we got two feet. We got a foot. We got three feet. We got two feet." And I'm like, "Oh boy!" And I finally, you know, I didn't believe him. And then I said, okay, well, I'm coming out. I just packed a backpack up and took a one-way ticket straight to Salt Lake City. Wow, that's crazy. Shout, shout. I think that was yeah, 92, 93 winter. Okay. I think it was, yeah. Shout out to Chris Templin. Who, uh, yeah, <laughs> that that's that's awesome. I guess I didn't realize you guys were so. It was Cle- did you like ski when you were in Cleveland? I mean, it's Georgia, Florida, obviously. No, no, I mean you did actually. You know, there was like a little ski club. They took you to this hill that was probably three hundred vertical feet. Teach you how to ski and stop and turn and stuff like that. But no, it's not. It's not. No, you know, it's it's not. It's not skiing. But no, I we did a little bit in high school. Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't like a main focus. So like, it, no, no, not at all. Yeah. Not at all. No, that makes sense. Well, it, it, so where, where did Telemark sort of cross paths with you? Was it, was it out on the East coast? Cause Sugarloaf's obviously a, that's a stronghold. Like there's always been a bunch of Telemark skiers there. Um, or was it when you moved out West that you kind of, kind of bumped into that? Yeah, actually I didn't even try to get into it really. I just downhill and, and and Sugarloaf, you know, and it's like boiler played up there. It's like rock hard. It's, it's com- obviously, you know, it's completely different. But no, I I got my skis, I don't know, stolen, misplaced, or whatever you want. One night we were down. So we used to live at Alps, which is now it used to be the Alpen Glow, and now it's Alps Mid Mountain Restaurant up in Alta. And so we'd ski down or whatever, and I just somehow misplaced or got my downhill stuff stolen which was no big deal because it was given to me anyways and then the next day uh i got some free telly stuff i can't even remember how i got it some leather boots with the rubber straps and it's like 205 k2s with just flip bindings in the back because that was off we went wow that's great so did you and chris both work up at alson is that kind of where all that started yeah he was working at the alpen glow and he's like okay hey, come on out we'll find you a job i woke up the next i, I got straight to salt lake went right up to alta jumped in a cat took me up to the mountain i had had no clue where i was woke up the next morning i was like holy smokes where am i at and the manager was standing there with a a shirt he's like hurry up we need you upstairs i said all right that was it no way (laughs) how old how how old were you i think i was 21 22 Jeez, that's crazy, dude. So like you didn't need, it, like you literally just like one way ticketed here, didn't really know what you were getting into. Just like, hey, I got a ski pass, like and and then you're living like mid mountain at Alta. Oh uh, you know, he's like, It's dumping. I'm like, it's freezing here. He's like, We got two feet. I'm like, We got a dusting. You know, and then after a while I'm just like, uh he's like, We'll find something, just come on out. And I said, All right, you know, dirty hippie with a backpack and some you know, and I just showed up and and woke up the next day. I had gear and a job, and I worked up there for until 2000. Wow, really? Until well, I bounced in and out between 95, 96, 97 in there, and I was brewing a little bit. Um, and then I was, I worked at Alpenglow, and then at Alps, and then I made snow or swung chairs for a year, then made snow, and then drove cats. <laughs> wow, dude, that's crazy! I didn't realize you did all that. That's amazing. Yeah, it was fun. You know, I mean, just not life was very free back then. You know, it was, uh, you know, didn't need much. You just need some good turns, and I mean, food and housing was paid for basically through your where where we worked, either swinging chairs or or working at the Alpen Glow. Yeah, and and we go to Jackson in the summer and work in the park. Oh no way! So that was like the so you, so were you like on the river and or in the uh, no 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 up at Signal Mountain Lodge. No, no, no. I worked at a kitchen up there, and my Chris, my brother, worked up there. My wife, Britt, she worked up there. My mom and dad worked up there. I met my wife in Alta. Same with Chris. No way. That's amazing. Yeah, we got married up there off the summer road and stuff. Wow. That's crazy. It, I mean, for not growing up skiing, and then I, I guess just to go back a little bit, like, so... You know, a lot of a lot of people I talk to, it's like you know they grow up skiing, and there's like the there's long history of, you know that, and then 
they they go to Alta and it's like this big thing. It almost sounds like from you, it's like you get out of high school and then you're like, oh, I'm just going to do some fun stuff. <laughs> I mean, like what, I guess what, what was it about skiing that even got you or was it just like, eh, I'm just going to go do this thing? No, we like, you know, growing up, like even on those little bunny hills, I mean, that was always fun and we always thought it was great. And then a couple of my buddies liked the Appalachian Trail. And then we went up and finished like the 100 mile wilderness with them in Maine. And they ended up staying in Carabasset. And I was like, I'll just stay here. And then obviously the sugar loaves, I mean, it's right there. So we, I just got a job instantly. And, and that's it. I mean, we just ski bumming it, you know? That's rad. That is like the. Yeah. That is like the real deal ski bum. It, like you've made snow, you've worked in the kitchen. Uh, yeah. Lived in my car. <laughs> bump, bump, ch- bump, bump chairs, lived in a car, <laughs> had yeah. the summer gig. That was amazing. Yeah, I've always had a job. I, I, I like working. I've always had a job, but yeah, definitely a professional dirt ball for a long time. But I feel like <laughs> cleaned up a little bit. <laughs> the outward appearance uh, you're you're, yeah. st- you're still a dirt bag inside but nobody nobody can quite see it as easily yeah we just don't want to let everybody know <laughs> that's amazing well you you mentioned you mentioned like in the <coughs> mid 90s you were already um brewing beer and how how did that whole thing come come about in terms of like just a hobby or I mean, especially back well, yeah, then. Yeah, you know, the, yeah, it, it actually, our first, my first home brewer I ever did was with uh, Piney. He's had a ski patrol up there for a long time. And my brother, they were living at, underneath the Wildcat, the Hecla Mine, where, where the patrollers live there, underneath mm-hmm. Wildcat lived. And we brewed, I think there was like 94, maybe, 93, maybe. We brewed a home brew there, German style Bach beer. And we went back into the mine. We couldn't fit it in the fridge because, you know, lager beers are colder for many beers. And so we went back into the mine, the Heckle mine that was open at that time. And we cruised back in there and got an old mine cart and put it in there and pushed it back into the Heckle mine until it was cold enough for lagering temperatures. What? And that was, that was the first brew we actually did. Yeah. You pushed it back inside of an old mine? Yeah, because it was colder in there, we couldn't fit it in the fridge. You don't have, we don't have temperature control in the fridge, but it worked really well. I mean, it worked great. I didn't so. even know there was an old mine up there in the '90s that was open still. That's hilarious. I mean, obviously it wasn't. It's right behind the house, so like right when you cr- go over the house on Wildcat, yeah, like the heck, yeah, and right as you start pitching uphill, it's right on the back side of that house. There's a mine right there. No way! Wow. Yeah, you used to be able to walk way far back in there. It was, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing dude was uh uh was the beer nut around back then like is that where you got oh i have no i have no idea where piney got all the ingredients from he's like we're gonna make beer like five gallons and i was like right on let's do it it sounds like fun of course free beer i mean i, I you know all comes along with it it's not free but irrelevantly yeah well i mean you're making it yourself and you're living at alta that sounds like a recipe for good times so <laughs> yeah and then we and then it, then it fermented out and Amazingly enough, it was good, and I was like, "Holy smokes, this is nuts!" I just made five gallons of beer. I could do that again, no problem. And, and off we went. Wow! So, and I guess for, when you first did it, I mean, did it seem easier than you thought it would be, or was it? I, I guess no, no. I'm sure back then it was just like, I mean, I mean, you're grinding up a bunch of grain and you're putting water in it. Like, what is yeast? And what is these things that hops? And how does it play? You know. Total newbie. I didn't know anything about it. So, uh, and then over time, obviously, you know, 30 years later, then here we are. But no, it's not. I think it was something that, well, I volunteered at a brewery in 95 downtown. Um, I was working in the kitchen and working at Alton Winter and working there for a little bit. And then I volunteered at the brewery and then they finally put me on the payroll. And since then, yeah, I worked there for a while and bounced around town, opened up a couple other breweries with some of the brewers that ran the facility I was at. And then I got, I was driving Cats and Alta in 2000 and I got hired on at Red Rock. And I was a brewmaster at Red Rock for 18 years. Wow. Yeah. It's, it's, so making, yeah, because, you know, growing up in Salt Lake, like I think mid 90s, there was so few. I mean, there was, that that was the one thing. There was a couple breweries back then, but it was always funny when I'd travel elsewhere and they're like, 
they think we're like a dry a dry state. <laughs> I'm like, no, we have like breweries, and they're like, what? Oh, I think there was like five, maybe five breweries in the state when we started brewing. I think that's what it was. Yeah. You know, you went at Squatter Wasatch, uh, Desert Edge. Oh yeah, Desert Edge was Moab around back then. I think Moab was. Yeah, I think they were. Yeah, yeah, they've been around a while. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, it was funny that because it, it, it's if for those that lived here back then, it always seemed like part of the culture. But um, yeah, I think from the outside looking in, people just assume that that wasn't a thing, you know. So, um, well, especially that you needed a membership to go get a drink, you had to be sponsored by somebody to get in the door. You had to eat food. I mean, it was they made it very difficult back then too. Oh, for sure. Yeah, and for those that are not familiar with. <laughs> That's funny that you just brought that up because I kind of forgot about that. But like if anybody growing up here in the 90s or, you know, anyone drinking 90s into the two, early 2000s, every bar was a private club or what they called a private club. And so the sponsorship, you, you couldn't really bar hop very easily because you had to pay this $5 membership and then you could like sponsor a couple friends, you know. So like if you really wanted to go multiple places, you could alternate on the on the five bucks or whatever, but yep, yep. Yeah. Yeah. It was uh, it's a lot different now. That's for sure. Yeah, no, that's, that's crazy. I totally forgot about that. You had to like sign in at the door. So the state knew where you were at and you were drinking. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yep. <I'm> center. <laughs> uh, that's so funny. Oh man. That, that brings it back some funny memories. <laughs> oh geez. Um, okay. So yeah, you, end, uh, you end up at Red Rock and you, you're brewing you're you're the brew master at red rock yeah you know that's kind of cliche but yeah i was a head brewer i ran we had two breweries we have a 10 barrel system and a 25 barrel system there we were part me and brett, brett my wife, i met her i actually i met her up at alta i met her at the kickstand remember the kickstand Kick- the little there used to be a sandwich shop up there at the top of albion oh yeah 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 yeah. totally yep yeah that's right yeah that's where i met her anyway, we were part owners of red rock and then we we knew about 2014 that I had it kind of like, if we we're going to do it, I needed to, we needed to get going. So we liquidized that interest. And, and then 2018, I resigned from there and opened up our place in fall of 2018. And our four year anniversary is coming up here in October. So, yeah, congrats. That's, uh, yeah, I appreciate it. Now, so is it the, give me the full name of the brewery because I, I want to make sure I get, get it right. Templin Family Brewing. Okay. Okay. So that's the that's the TF. Okay. Got it. Yeah. TF Templin Family TF. It's just shorter sometimes, you know, and it, it abbreviates nicely. But you know, most of the, you know was, that was difficult to you know people say, what are you going to name your brewery? Well, how are you going to do this? And why would you call it this? Or Barrel Works at? Or Hop this? Or you know, and all my favorite breweries are most of them are German owned family breweries, and so it just naturally clicked just to kind of keep it in the family. And I got two kids, and Chris has got a couple kids, and. So hopefully one day they'll just take it over and they can kick it down to their kids, you know? Yeah. No, that's really cool. Is it, so do you, when, when you decided to open your own brewery, like was, do you guys focus on a certain type of beer? Like you said, like you really like the German style beers. I mean, was that some sort of consideration or was it just like, okay, like that was more like the name thing and, and. You know, I guess. No, I knew I knew I was going to make a lot of German lager beers. I mean, those are my favorite beers to brew. I think they're super difficult to make correct and s- stylistically to what they're actually supposed to be. Um, so I, we knew that we were going to focus on lager beers. Obviously, our we sell a ton of IPAs and sour beers, and we do barreled aged beers and all those kind of fun beers. So you know, IPAs, lager beers, to me, the you know, those are the cores basically of the wind in our sail yeah what what is it we joke about this at, at for your life it's like the ipa thing with skiers and uh because like you know obviously be having a retail shop that we mount skis there's a there's a a great relationship i would say with uh beverages being dropped off and oh yeah <laughs> uh but it's funny because you know i'd say like 10 years ago like when ipas kind of first started showing up you know maybe maybe it's longer than that it's probably longer than that but um it just seemed to be like uh, hey we're going to opera ski and then everybody get ipas now and now it seems like there's sort of this shift like 
the younger kids, the younger guys don't like the IPAs, but I think all the old timers like think I, I, I guess what is the relationship? Why do I, why is IPA such a big thing with skiers? <laughs> That's why I'm, I'm, like, I'm trying to figure it out. I, I don't, I'm, I'm not quite sure. You know, I mean, you know, you get a bigger bang for the buck on most of those, but IPAs 15, 12 years ago are so different than they are now. It's, they used to be like full of like caramel, like uh, malts and, and overly bitter and just overly hopped almost. And now they're just a little bit more cleaner materials. Uh, they're they're brighter and crisper and and uh, more refreshing but they still i mean our fur ipa is 8.3 abv i mean they've got they've got a kick to it so if you're skiing then i don't know if you want to take two beers out there and you know and have a good time well maybe take a couple of ipas call the 12 or fevers is you know is a little bit heavy sometimes oh okay see i can you buy it. yeah i can buy into that like it's a uh, you're you're conserving space for alcohol well, quali- <laughs> quali- yeah, or, quali- or quality over quantity you know i mean that's that's a big thing we focus on we're not trying to make the most beer we're trying to just make the best beer so it's like if you're going to go out all day long you can only you only want to carry a couple you know 16 ounce beers with you probably going to take an ipa or something like that with you instead of just you know two crushers that you'll hit at lunch and they're gone yeah no so, uh, yeah yeah i know that totally makes sense and uh I, I, um, this is kind of a random question, kind of going back to the old school Utah laws. Cause I mean, every state's got f- funky stuff, uh, despite everybody thinking Utah is weird. Uh, but the, uh, when you're brewing beer, ke- kegs are still illegal here, right? Like, is that true? Well, you can't, you can't purchase a keg and take it home. Right. Nope, that's illegal. Yep. Right. And so, so some of the higher volume beers still can't be on tap. Is that right? No, no, yeah. So five percent and under ABV is a lot to be poured on draft in the state of Utah. Yeah. Anything above five percent ABV needs to be in a can or a bottle. Yeah. Okay. I just want yeah. to make sure. And, we, was... and the majority of our volume is high ABV beers. So it's 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 silly. It's you know you come in, you sit down, say kick an IPA, say great, we grab a can, we open it, we put it in a glass and hand it to you. Right. It just can't come out of a faucet, which is the total opposite of what I. I mean think about it it's a label it's a lid it's a can it's cold storage it it just makes no sense it really doesn't make any sense to me but yeah um, i'm sure that'll go away i I, yeah i'm glad you brushed me up on it because i mean like yeah like you know you you talk about having every job as a ski bum i mean i waited tables for god knows how long and yeah that was you know you had to sort of go through all of the different you know you had to have chips on the table for instance to have the beer you know yep, like yep, you, yep. you could you could have a a beer and a shot but you couldn't have a shot and you couldn't have like a sidecar you remember that so yeah, oh yeah oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah you're in the so restaurant TF, tfs yeah this is a bar so we we have like fresh pretzels made every day and and we have a local butcher make our charcuterie boards and stuff like that we have food trucks in our parking lot every day but i mean you can come in and have a a shot and a IPA if you want it. You don't need to order any food. It's not like that here. Yeah. Cause yeah. Okay. So it's a bar. Yeah. Bar license. So that's a bar. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's rad. Yeah. Oh, oh I think it, it eventually it's, yeah. Like you said, it, it, there's some stuff that doesn't make sense. So it's, uh, it, yeah. And it bothers a lot of people, but I've been doing it so long that, I mean, it doesn't, it's, I don't even notice it to be really quite honest with you. No, so you can get anything you want. It's just comes in a different package. That's it. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And it's changed so much even in the last 20 years. So it's. Oh, yeah. 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 But those high school kids, they still got to drive to Evanston, Wyoming to get the keg. <laughs> yeah. 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 I guess so. Uh, yeah. I don't know. You know, I mean, you can go buy as much canned beer as you want, as equivalent to a keg or two kegs or five kegs, but you can't have the physical keg, yeah. and, which is, I'm not quite sure that probably overconsumption. That's probably what the their deal is with that yeah for sure yeah no you don't want to do that kids if you're listening it's a it's like a bootlegging charge i'm pretty sure something something weird some weird ticket if you get caught with it so yeah you don't want to get caught with it in utah yeah oh that's crazy man well that's so you guys are coming up on four years uh at uh and your your facility is awesome i mean it's such a cool it, it's cool to see that part of town also sort of coming up you know um 
Did you, did you guys build that ground up? I can't remember. Or was there an no, 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 no. No, the Granary District is where we're at. We're like ninth, south, third, west. And it's really, it's since the last four years since we've got here, not saying since we've got here, but I've seen growth in the last four years that it's unbelievable down here now. It's, you can't buy a, you can't buy a piece of dirt around here. It's, it's, it's unbelievable. I mean, there's bars and cideries and restaurants just popping up everywhere down here. And a lot of them aren't really known about, but a lot of them are in the making right now. But the buildings that we moved into are owned by the Warburton family, and it's uh, four auto mechanic garages. Uh, we moved into three of them when we got here. So we have a tasting room. It's about 250-person tasting room. And then we have um, a barrel room where we do barrel maturation and private events. And then we have the brew house where we do all the manufacturing, where all the tanks and all that is. Wow. That's crazy, man. Yeah, that is that that whole granary district is pretty wild to see uh, how it's come up. It's really become sort of like the gastronomy sort of scene. Like there's like the breweries, like there's food. I mean, and it, it, yeah, for someone who hasn't been here, definitely check it out. I mean, that area is a, is very interesting to go um, kind of poke around and see all these new things popping up. So. Yeah, it's growing like crazy. It's it's unbelievable. I mean, we're, there's a lot of new restaurants and stuff. It's it's great. I mean, it's great for us. I love it. Yeah, no, that's awesome. Um, I, so I guess just running a brewery, I mean, are you still, I mean, I, I know it's family, you know, Templin Family Brewery. I mean, are you in like the day-to-day operations of it or? How, oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm here every day. Uh, Britt, my wife, she does you know, like all a lot of my financial, social media, HR, you know, all that stuff. She without her, I'd be screwed. She runs the whole place. <laughs> I got the fun, easy job. I run around the brewery and get to play with grain and hops, and you know, and I can beer all the time. And we bottled twenty four hundred bottles of beer today. I mean, just with a specialty beer coming out for our anniversary. And you know, yeah, I'm in the brewery every day. Yeah, I, I want to be part of the team, and it, it's important for me to. To, to drag the line a little bit with the guys, you know, so they, they see that you're not just sitting there with your feet up on the desk thinking that you're the boss. I, I don't like that. Yeah, for sure. Well, it seems like, like you said, you always liked working and, um, you know, I think that's a good, that's a good way to do it. You know, get your hands dirty with the crew and, and, you know, that's how you, that's how you keep it going. You know, I mean, that's, that's rad. Well, uh, if you disconnect, if you disconnect yourself from the tangibility of, of the process then you, you'll lose you'll lose it like you'll lose the smells and the tastes and the flows and the the dynamics of fermentation and, and all that stuff but to, if you stay involved with it then you're constantly learning and keeping your you know your sword sharpened yeah no absolutely well so are you uh with 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 owning the brewer i mean obviously owning a business like that takes a lot of time i mean are you are you still able to ski quite a bit in the winter time I try to ski. <laughs> ah. I try to ski as uh, you got me. I, I try to ski as much as I can. Try to, it ain't the hundred. The hundred day days are are long behind me. Um, I'll be fifty two here in the spring, so you know I still go up and ski as much as I can. And you know we had passes at Alta since until last year. Last year I got an Icon pass, first time I ever did that. I thought it was kind of interesting. You can bounce around a little bit. Did you? Did you Obviously, like? Did but, you like that? Go ahead. No, I was just curious. I mean, yeah, I do. I liked it because I say, oh, there's a four-hour line at Little. I'm like, well, I'm just going to go to Park City then, get, walk up to wherever and go. You yeah. understand what I'm saying? Um, that's why, you know, I, 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 when I speak to my brother, you know, he works up at Alta Centro. He's been there for 30 years, and he skis. He's like, oh, I ski. He's, every day he skis pretty much. And I can't hang with him, and he is he reps him. He he goes to high boy top to bottom, and he just takes off, and everything's great. He just waited at the bottom for 20 minutes for me to get down there. You know what I mean? Cause he's in such good shape. Yeah. I, it, it's, I, I think I, I feel very fortunate to have those days. Of course, someone's going to roll their eyes when you say it, but back in the day and it would dump and you go have lunch and there's nobody at the lift line. There's nobody in the Canyon. There's just, and, and if the word gets out that it's going to dump now, I mean, you better have your P's and Q's together in the morning and, and scramble up there and get after it because if not, I mean, you're just going to sit in your car for hours and hours and hours. Yeah, it's, <clears throat> and I try not to harp on that too much, you know. No, like, either do I. You know, if, it, if you want to go though, you just got to be prepared. Just get up and go. No, know? but it, but it is. Di- that's what I was going to say. Is like I, I think for any of us that have been here, you know, you moved here in the '90s. I, I just think there's such a different. Um, 
we're just used to something totally different, you know, <laughs> like you said, you used to be able to almost like you could get up at eight o'clock and be like, yeah, I think I'm going to go, you know, up and yeah, let's, get let's, some grab fresh. A <laughs> a, let's grab a bagel and a cup of coffee. We'll mosey up. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. And it was like, you still could get fresh snow. I mean, that's like yeah. long gone. I mean, that's definitely not, not how it's rolling these days. So, uh, But I, you know, it's, it's all good. And it's more now about just being there and being up there and, you know, my kids, I mean, my, just like my brother's kids. I mean, my kids skied there since they were three years old. They still got passes. They, they go all the time. And, and that kind of part to me is, is good. I think, um, hammering all, all day long, six, five days a week. I mean, those days were fun, but those days are gone for me, but they were fun. But you know, a couple of days a week, the storms come in, you line it up and you, and you get out of the brew house and, and it's still all good. I mean, that's great. So yeah. you got you got to you got to give thanks for what you you can still get. You know what I mean? No, for sure. Yeah, and being in your twenties versus being in your forties or fifties. I mean, it's generally different. I'm not going to say that for everybody. There's some people, like you said, your bro's still shredding every day, and there's oh, dude. a vast every difference f- physically of guys that still ski every single day. Like I'm the same way. Like you know, I, I pride myself at being a pretty good off the couch telemark skier but you know the guys that are up there every single day are probably gonna smoke me so yeah well it's it's still you know i enjoy it a lot i mean i just got well how you guys mounted boards for me last year that's good so i mean i got fresh stuff and it's always nice to it's just nice to get up there and go see you know it's almost you know how alto is like you know a little cop was like home to me i mean that's what brought me all out here and that's where it all started so it's got a special place yeah, no, for sure. Is it, are, are, do you guys have your beer like at resorts now? Like what's the distribution like for people that are interested yeah. in getting it? Car, anyone can get it. We have a class five packaging agency. So we sell directly to whole, whole wholesalers to restaurants can come in and buy their beer directly at our brewery. It's always cold. It's never on the shelf warm. Like the state holds it. Um, we Carlson is our distributor. So we do, can beer and a little bit of draft not a lot of draft but mostly can beer yeah and it's it's all up park city and it's all, alta snowbird you know up big cottonwood and yeah grocery stores yeah that's right ra- is it is it cool to like just see that like when you're you know when you do go up skiing if you do i don't know if you i mean you, i guess you run a brewery so i don't know if you're like going to the opera ski bar you know but i mean if you do 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 that or see see one of your beers out there is it is that just like a an awesome feeling to see oh, that love it. sort of combination it. you know oh yeah oh yeah i love it, it it's yeah it's still i still like it's like, Brit, look 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 guys are drinking our beer <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah oh it's super cool yeah and especially and especially those kind of people you know and like up i should say mountain dwellers you know i i, I kind of think with that without that i wouldn't have met my wife i wouldn't be where i'm at and so to see those younger um generation up there enjoying those things and still shredding and they're drinking our beer too that's, that's super flattering yeah that's that's cool it, it i I like talking to you because it's like it's a, uh, it's almost you're, you're like a a brewer of the people, so to speak. Like you said, like mountain dwellers, man. Like I think people that have lived that life, you know, at least for a, a part of you know, like a that decade, you know, or gone up, you know, even a couple years at Alta, you know, I think that really changes people and how you that your perception of of that lifestyle because there's so many people in the world that don't get that (laughs) you know that oh yeah i tell my son just you should go do it just clock out of life for two years and go rip it go ski five days a week and stay out late and have fun and get up early and get you know goggle eyes and then go to summertime and go run rivers all summer and do that for a couple years and you can live you know you can be a grown-up when you're done with that but you gotta i mean i think that's i think it's important yeah, for sure. Is is uh, is, are your kids are there like already out of high school, like at that age where you're having that talk with them? Yeah, my son's second year in college, and my my daughter um is a senior, so she's getting there. <laughs> yeah, jeez, that's crazy. It's like a, yeah, it's I'm sure that's wild, man. You're probably like, wait, <laughs> that was me like not too long ago. <laughs> no, yeah. <laughs> now I'm telling you guys to get goggle tan. That's that's good parental advice, man. Get a goggle tan check out for two years. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I mean, it's okay to eat ramen and peanut butter and jelly. 
it works fine for a lot of people for sure focus on that other stuff later just go spread your wings a little bit i think that's i think it's good for you yeah no for sure and it seems like you know how i mean you probably seen this too i mean it seems like people that have had that experience you know people you probably met at alta for instance you know, I think a lot of those people end up going on to do really cool stuff. And a lot of times just, Oh yeah. I don't know. I don't know why I just, it just seems like there's sort of this weird melting pot in, in a resort like that. And oftentimes, you know, they, they go off, like you said, breweries or, you know, business people or, but, but, you know, for that little section of time, they got to experience that, that lifestyle of just living on a mountain and that's all that they were focused on. So. Yeah. I mean, we didn't think about much back then. I mean, you know, is it going to snow? <laughs> What's, what, who's play, who's playing at the bar next weekend? I mean, it's, it really was such a simple, simple thing. I don't even, I had no money. You know, you had gear, you had food, you had a place to sleep. I mean, all you need is snow. And, and then when the winter was over, you just head off to your next gig for six months. And then the leaves change colors and you head back to the mountain. Yeah. That's uh, yeah. that is as simple as it gets, man. Oh, it was beautiful. It was great. Oh. I'm glad I did it. I love that. Well, so are you guys uh, for the anniversary? Are you guys doing any? You said you were putting a special beer out, um, or is that? Did I catch that right? Yeah, we bottled a, a barrel aged beer today. It's a, it's like a, it's a Brett inspired beer. So it's like a, a funkier yeast. It's got like 1200 pounds of cherries in it. It's bottle condition. It's like corked and caged and it's all pretty and beautiful. That'll be a fun beer to experience. And we have some parties coming up and so, yeah, it'll be good. It's like the 25th, 25th of September. Yeah. No, October, October. Sorry. Oh, 25th of October. Yeah. October. It might be snow on the ground by then. Well, I don't know. It's like, <laughs> It's like 103 degrees right now, which is bizarre, but, uh, hopefully it'll be cooler by October. So yeah, it's cooking down here right now. That's for sure. Yeah, no, definitely. Yeah. Well, I'll, uh, I'll definitely kind of link some stuff in the, in the show notes so people can check it out. Cause I know that's always like the number one question, you know, people come into Salt Lake and they're like, where, where do we go? You know, like we need to, you know, they want to go to breweries or get good food and i love that you brought that up because that's such a cool part of town that people uh maybe if they haven't been to, to the city they don't realize a lot of that stuff's down that way yeah we got a big outdoor patio fire pits and the whole thing we're super dog friendly i mean the thing too is just t- people can come down anytime it, you don't need to make a big a big deal about it hey are any of the brewers around yeah here they are hey you show me around check it out we do it every day almost it's you know so don't don't be shy come on down and you learn something too i think you know people say oh i love this beer i wonder why i like this beer so much say well let me show you how it's made this is what the ingredients are maybe that's why you like it so much because x or this or that and and then that can that can steer them in the right direction down the road to say oh i really like these darker beers because of this it reminds me of that or I like hoppy beers because it does, you know, reminds me of this or I like this flavor profile. And then when they move on down, down the road, they go to different places and they say, Oh, I like these kind of styles of beer because of, and then it makes their choices. I don't know. Easier. Maybe keeps them in the right channel. Yeah, no, for sure. I mean, that's such a, it's such a wide world. I mean, even hearing you talk about it, I'm like, I need to learn more. <laughs> you know, yeah, just come on down. I, yeah, I need to. We'll have to do that. We need to do some skiing too. I think you're on my program, so we can you and I can hang out and and let your bro just go shred every day, every single day with yeah. the, with the young guys at the shop. So, but yeah, he's, he he definitely shreds it. No, that's awesome. Well, I hey, I really appreciate you taking the time to chop it up a little bit, and and uh, like I said, you know, I I'm it, I'm just so. I get so stoked to just meet new people that are doing cool stuff that are telemark skiers. You know, I, I don't want to, uh, you know, I don't, I don't want a podcast where I'm just talking about telemark gear all the time, or, you know, I talk a lot about history, but I, I love meeting people that, especially like you, like having that ski bum background and, and, uh, you know, I'm sure you had a goggle tan at one point and, and 
Now look at you. <laughs> yeah. Now I'm, done. now I'm trying to get one. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know. I was like, that's like the badge of honor back in the day is like. Oh, yes, it was. Yes, it was. Yeah. I've been on. Yeah, I, got, I mean, I just got new telegear last year and my wife's like, come on, when are you going to get some downhill gear? What are you doing? I'm like, I don't know. I just, I mean, I pretty much parallel all the time anyways. And, you know, unless, you know, we get a little steeper pitch and some and some snow and then you know everybody's dropping a knee and that's all fun but it's it's like almost like the best of both worlds yeah no for sure and and that's the thing you can you can always i always say good telemark skiers know how to make a good parallel turn too you know it's part of the mix and uh you know you don't i mean i and that was a badge of honor too you know you're dropping knees every single turn every single day (laughs) i mean i think as we get older you start realizing okay maybe i can conserve some energy here and there you know so yeah yeah cruise around Hey, we do got a big party coming up on the October 21st. You should tell people about it. We're doing Opre Snow. Uh, it's called like Pray for Snow Party, but it's Opre for Snow. Smith Optics is sponsoring it, and we got a bunch of bunch of new beers coming out for it. It's a big party, so you should check it out. Oh, I love that. Okay, so that's on October 21st. Um, yeah, October 21st. It, you know, it's Armada skis and nitro snowboards and all those guys brighton and powder magazine will all be here and stuff like that so it'll be a good party oh rad okay for sure yeah no i'll, I'll i mean we're this will go out to all the people so that's awesome i and uh i'll definitely try to find a link or something and i can put it in there and then obviously are you, are you guys doing a party right after that for the anniversary or is it kind of a all is that all kind of that same week yeah we'll have a little get together on the 25th i'm sure but actually, the day before that, I just found out today that on October 20th, we're having Telemark Colorado coming in, and they're doing four films here and a big raffle and all this. Oh, no I just way. found out about I just found out about that like 10, 10 minutes before you called me. Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> well, there you go. All right. Well, yeah, yeah so no, those. We'll have to make sure to get you guys in there. Yeah, we know those dudes. Those are, those are, they're cool people. So that's rad. Okay, cool. So we got some Telemark stuff in the mix. I like it. Yeah. E- even better, man. Well, yeah, I'll. Let's go. I'll, I'll definitely, uh, yeah, that's, sounds like October's got some fun stuff down at the brewery. So I'm stoked about that. Yeah, it'll be fun. Definitely the 20th and 21st will be fun. I mean, the, the TGR, they're, they're, they're showing a film for the, for the Smith party. So you, you can see it on our website or on our Instagram. I'm sure details. Yeah, no, for sure. Well, we'll pass it along. Well, I'm I'm psyched we got to chat, man, and uh, hopefully we'll get to make some turns this winter. And uh, I hope you I hope you enjoy brewing the beer as we head into the winter for all the skiers. Yeah, let's go. I appreciate you having me. And you know, if anybody wants to come in, check out the place. Just come on in. Don't be shy. Just ask for one of the guys. We'll show you around. I love it's pretty it. Interesting. Oh, yeah. no, for sure. And I can vouch for that. It's an awesome spot. So I'll I'll all come right. down with you. <laughs> Dig it. Well, thanks for having me. Appreciate it. All right. Thanks, brother. Talk to you soon. Okay, bye. Super rad catching up with Kevin, getting to know him a little bit better. And uh, I like talking about beer. We talked more about, more about beer than we did Telemark, but uh, I hope you all enjoyed it. And, uh, you know, part of what I've been trying to do with the podcast is, is reach out to people that are Telemark skiers that are, that are doing – you know, cool stuff in this world. And, uh, I thought this was one of those cool culture podcasts and, uh, it's fun to kind of, you know, uh, get to know some of these other, uh, brewers out there. Uh, I know my buddy Bert, we had had him on the podcast who was in Michigan and, uh, part of the, the early craft brew scene at Bell's Brewery and some other places too. So fun to talk to Kevin, kind of see his background. I think my favorite part of the podcast was, uh, putting the first homebrew inside of a mine cart and uh, <laughs> pushing it back into an old mine at Alta. So uh, as as someone who lived up there for a season, I can appreciate that on a lot of levels. But I uh, appreciate him uh, checking things out. Be sure to check out Templin Brewing, uh, Temp- Templin Family Brewing uh, next time you're in Salt Lake. And uh, check out the show notes for some info on uh, their website and location. And you can check that out. As for us, be sure before you get off this podcast, go find our sign up for our mailing list in the show notes, become part of that. This is a good time to do it too. Uh, We're going to let you all know new arrivals, things we're doing, information about events this winter. You won't want to miss it. 
sign up for that mailing list be part of uh that free heal life family on the weekly uh as far as connecting with me always love it when uh people connect with me on on the social medias uh i'm at josh no madsen on instagram and on facebook and you can find me there uh, i've been chiming in on the facebook forum and getting in there answering some questions the last few weeks so if you're one of those users great if you're not you're more of an analog person uh probably the email list is a good way to kind of stay in touch with what's going on there uh, thanks as always for supporting us shopping at freehilllife.com you can email me directly any thoughts on the podcast at podcast at freehilllife.com much love much respect and until next week brothers and sisters of the turn spread telemark always peace out